Hey guys, welcome back to My Unpopular Opinion. Thank you for tuning in. If you like my commentary and the things that I say in my videos, which I hope everyone does, then go ahead and subscribe to my channel. You know, we're trying to get things going over here, okay? <laughs> subscribe to the channel and uh, turn your post notifications on so you can be notified when I upload because I upload at random moments, okay? So we have a couple different topics today. I want to talk about Sierra first. So Sierra, the singer, announced that she is pregnant with her fourth child Woo! okay now that we got the you know excitement out the way that's great i'm excited for her i think she's a great mother i think it's amazing that she has been able to move on and just start a family that just seems so much more positive and uplifting you know she has a better relationship situation you know everybody talks about sierra's prayer and how she moved on from future and all his bitterness and toxicity that he has going on okay um so that's amazing for her i'm happy that her and russell are able to continue their family and i love how he treats future baby future like his own son um so you know i, I feel like this is good for them to to keep going now i might have a different opinion than everybody else as you know i am here with unpop my unpopular opinion so i will just go ahead and say that i feel like i don't think this was the right time for her to get pregnant Okay, I know. Okay, boo, boo, boo. But I feel like this wasn't the right time for Sierra to get pregnant because Sierra has been actively trying to reboot her music career and just get it going. You can see that she's been trying to get the momentum going since she released Level Up some years ago. Um, and she has been very consistent with her releases. She's been very consistent with getting back out there. And I just feel like this is such an odd time for her to get pregnant. And I'm only, you know, saying this because Sierra has money. You know, when you got money like that and you got the whole setup, you can set your pregnancy up whenever you want to okay especially when you're an artist you have to plan those things out the best way you possibly can especially when you're very ambitious and you like are trying to get your career you know up and moving again it's kind of like you know not a good thing because think about it she just released all these little singles and songs and collaborations and then she released her recent song with chris brown um which i actually like but her ep is coming out um, this month on the 18th, I do believe, August 18th. So after her EP comes out, I'm sure she's going to need to like maybe tour it, maybe do some performances. And she's pregnant. She's big pregnant, obviously, because she's been um, covering up her stomach and stuff. So I know she can move a little bit, but she's not going to really be able to give us the real performance that is needed. I feel like when you want to revive your career, as so many artists have done in the past, or revamp your career, or reinvent is really the word that they use, it takes a lot of hard work, dedication, and fierceness in you to make that happen you know when Beyonce took a year off that one time a long time ago she said I haven't sang in a year and she came back to get her tour set up for that year and everything she went hard okay anytime like Mariah Carey uh she had to revive her career numerous times and every single time it's like she continued to have to like reprove to the public that she's still good you know and you do have to do that and I feel like Sierra is gonna be hard for her to do that pregnant and then it's gonna be hard because she's gonna have a newborn baby and she's gonna want to be present for that baby so I don't know if this was the best time for her to have a baby but I am happy for her and I know that with all that money and success and connections and everything else that her and her man got they can make it work but you know I do want her to be successful and I don't know if that is gonna be the best timing for it I don't know but y'all let me know in the comments what you think about it so moving on to the next topic, Doja Cat is being accused of stealing from the iconic television personality, Nene Leaks, also known as Lenithia Monique Leaks. <laughs> now, if y'all watch my channel, you guys know I'm a big fan and supporter of Nene. Even when people hate on her, I don't care. Um, but in this situation, in a lot of situations, she's right, even though she didn't do anything, but she should be doing something. So 
Um, Doja Cat has released her new song, Paint the Town Red, okay? You know, she's been getting mixed reviews about the way she's been acting on social media, as well as her recent releases, because it's a complete 180 compared to the music that she had released before. Now, I'm a big Doja Cat fan as well. I do love songs like Freaky Deaky. I feel like she ate that song. I love a lot of her her music um, when she just seems like she's more lightweight. And in a happier state. Um, this new music, like Paint the Town Red, I I like the beat and I like the song. I think Doja's talented. I like the creativity in the video. I don't necessarily love the darkness of everything, um, but I do like the song. I think it's catchy. Now, Doja in the song said, I said what I said. We all know that comes from an iconic quote from Nene Leakes when she was on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. She was yelling at Candyman and she said, I said what I said and I ain't changing on it, okay? Everybody knows that statement. Everybody knows that that came from Nene, right? Um, Doja decided to use that in her song, which is fine because rappers do that kind of stuff all the time, use a line in a song. But the issue is when she started to drop some merch with I said what I said on it. Now, Doja, I like you, but that is ridiculous. And I don't think that she should have even done this because this is not Doja's first time being accused of stealing from another artist. We know she had the It's Giving situation where she tried to create merch for It's Giving. And I forgot where that came from. But all I know is I said what I said came from Nene. It was one thing for you to put that in a song. But you're not about to use her catchphrase or one of her many famous catchphrases and put it on merch and try to sell it, knowing that that came from her. Now, I love Doja. I don't know how Doja identifies. I know that she is biracial, black, and white. But Doja is not a good look with all the backlash you've been getting lately to now steal or seem like you're stealing you know from a iconic black woman who has been trying her hardest to, to fight her own battles in the entertainment industry so doja you could have at least put nini in the music video like how bia put her in the video for using her voice with bling 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 i respected bia for doing that or just run lanithia monique leaks her coins for using her catchphrase, one or the other. Now, the bigger issue is that Nene's lawyer, because this is not like a management thing, this is a lawyer thing, I, I do believe. Nene's lawyer should have, uh, you know, gotten all of her phrases and everything locked down um, only so she could profit off of them financially. Um, I don't know if she's been able to do that or what the situation is. I'm going to have to look into it. But I think that Nene needs to be a little bit more proactive in having her attorney um, lock these phrases down. Now, we know it, things like that is deeper than what we know. You know, you never know how much money you might have to pay, how much you have to do to secure those things. But we know she made them famous and she should be able to trademark all of her major catchphrases and things like that. Like that. I know she has an issue with the gifts and everything that are used on social media of her and her phrases, but she definitely can benefit financially from, you know, if someone wanted to use I said what I said, if she locked it down. So let me know down in the comments what you guys think about this topic with Doja Cat using I Said What I Said. Now, I will also note that I went on Doja Cat's website and the I Said What I Said merch has now been removed. So I don't know if she removed it because of the backlash and caught wind of it, but it has been removed. So, okay. So next topic we have to talk about is, of course, everybody's been talking about it, Tory Lanez and Megan Thee Stallion. Tory Lanez has now been sentenced to 10 years in jail. Of course, he's not going to do the entire 10. That may get cut down to maybe half or a little bit more than half of that. But he is going to be doing at least five to six years off of that 10 years, depending on how everything is set up. And the internet is in outrage. We all know that some people are happy, like, yay, you know, that he needs to go. And a lot of people are very unhappy and unhappy with Megan because they believe that she lied. And we all know that that's been the ongoing thing from the beginning of this weird 
botched trial and case has been people half and half. People are split. Some think, you know, Megan's innocent. Some think Tori is innocent. A lot think Tori is innocent. And regardless, I don't know what this means for Megan the Stallion moving forward. I think it just looks very weird for her um, because there were so many ups and downs in the case and so many things that she was untruthful about. Um, and then Tory didn't make things look better for himself because he's constantly had situations with court and him being violent, allegedly, uh, to other people and other women. And so it didn't like help his case, some of the other things he was doing. Like even when he fought, August Alcina or jumped August Alcina or whatever for not speaking to him in the midst of going through the Megan thing. So, you know, Tori was doing dumb stuff as well. I don't know if my channel is big enough for me to give my personal opinion on the case. I'll just say that I'm not a big fan of Megan the Stallion. You know, this is, I call this page my unpopular opinion. So I expect for people not to agree with everything I say. And I'm not going to go too much in detail about what I think exactly, but I do feel like excuse me, there were a lot of holes in this case. And it's odd because you are actually, according to the law of the in the United States of America, you are innocent until proven guilty. And technically, in a lot of people's eyes, Tory was never proven guilty. Um, there were a lot of things like they didn't even really have real evidence of him, you know, allegedly pow-powing somebody. So, you know, it's weird to be charged with and, you know, given 10 years of a sentence for something that they don't even have evidence for. We're just pretty much, you know, going off of someone's word. So I don't know. I, I wasn't there. Um, but, you know, I think it is something not clean in the buttermilk. Something ain't clean in the buttermilk, as Phaedra was saying. And I think that Megan Miss Bigfoot, I think that there's something really, really odd and sinister about her. And I think that there's some things that just don't rub me the right way about her. And I think a lot of people, so it makes it hard for us to really empathize with her, especially when we don't know when she's, you know, when she's telling the truth or not. So I'm not going to get too much into that because I know people get mad when you, when you, you know, don't just rally behind her. But I'm sorry, y'all. I'm not not somebody who you know just blindly follows people if i follow you or like you a lot it's because i actually am like using discernment and i believe in your cause i don't believe in megan's cause so let me know down in the comments what you guys think about tori getting 10 years of a sentence so last topic let's get into the last and most certainly the least um offset the serial cheater also known as the man who wants to be michael jackson and um cardi b also known as the woman of many 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 faces and many many bodies and many many personalities so we know that they released their thirst bucket song called um floppacy and Floppacy peaked, I do believe, at number 55, not even not even in the top 50. Um, and, you know, that's just interesting. And I think people are calling them out because of um, Botch Body B and her big old botch mouth. You know, she touted around town on Lizzo's record that her records live in the top 10 and she's been thinking she can compete with people that she cannot compete with. And so because people have been boosting her big head up, up and her big body up um she has been you know making it seem like she's something she's not and i think that the hype and fluff is really dying down around her and offset i know that she did this record obviously to try to keep herself relevant but also to keep offset relevant and as you can see it's not working the record wasn't good um and i think that people are starting to see through both of them and their mediocrity um, it's not really something that we are into these days. I know a lot of people who are still low vibrational, they do like her and they do like, you know, basic one dimensional music, but the song really wasn't a bop. Um, I think, like I said in a previous video, um, the shapeshifter, she came with the same flow, same sound, same lack of pronunciation and enunciation. And Offset came with the same old redundant Migo sound. So y'all can't expect to pop and think that you can compete with um, the likes of icons in, in hip hop and rap and try to battle back and forth on Twitter and whatnot with real icons. And you in the top, 50, what, 55? 
So I think that they needed this humbling experience. And I think there are more humbling experiences to come for the both of them. Just wait and see. So, guys, let me know in the comments what you think about this topic and all the topics. This is the end of the video. Thank you for watching and getting to the end of the video. And please subscribe to the channel, y'all. Bye-bye.